Russia seeks to negotiate with NATO on its own terms, analysts say. Therefore, it suits more and more of various provocations. One of the latest occurred on May the 5th near the coast of Romania in the Black Sea. There, the Polish plane was carrying out a planned flight in international airspace in cooperation with the Romanian services, and it narrowly avoided a collision with a Russian fighter. The Russian warplane flew right in front of the nose of the Polish plane, crossing its flight path at a dangerous distance. According to the crew's assessment, it was about five meters from the message of the Polish border guard. The Polish plane, according to the border service, experienced serious turbulence. The crew temporarily lost control of the aircraft, causing it to begin to fall. After this incident, NATO had to raise combat aircraft in the air to establish control over the situation. And this is not the first provocation by Russia. On April the 26th, German and British fighter jets intercepted three Russian aircraft in the skies over the Baltic Sea. The Su-27, together with the Il-20 command aircraft, were flying without a transponder single. On the one hand, Russia claims in its propaganda that it is at war with the entire NATO bloc because it seems completely shameful to lose to Ukraine alone. But on the other hand, Russia does not want a direct clash with NATO, realizing that it will immediately receive a devastating defeat. In March 2023, Russian fighter jets staged a provocation against an American reconnaissance drone in the Black Sea. As a result, the drone fell and sank, and the U.S. command received a sort of call to respond. According to analysts, in this way Russia resorts to its last argument, since it cannot achieve victory on the battlefield in the war against Ukraine. Russia's operational goal is a ceasefire agreement in Ukraine in order to obtain an operational pause. And the strategic goal. Vladimir Putin spoke about it even at the parade on May the 9th. The strategic goal is to take the place at the world geopolitical table that was occupied by the Soviet Union. Even before the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Putin issued an ultimatum to NATO to withdraw to the 1997 borders before when the countries of Eastern Europe became members of NATO, but the ultimatum failed, and the alliance has only expanded its borders over the past year. Putin has got what he most feared, the expansion of NATO and its willingness to repulse the enemy. Today the alliance not only supports Ukraine politically, but also provides it with military assistance. In Putin's eyes, the threat from NATO is expanding. Mykola Malomush, head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, 2005-2010 in an interview with Focus Publication. Experts do not rule out that Russia will continue to arrange various provocations over the territories of the EU and NATO countries and resort to nuclear blackmail, because according to the Kremlin, the potential threat of a nuclear strike opens the way to political agreements. But Russia is weakening with every day of its war. It has never been able to adapt the economy to military needs, and the bet on China has not yet yielded results. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Natalia Husak, Volodymyr Stanhelov, UATV News.